God, we praise you today because we've got no other story. We've got no other song <laughs> but to praise you, to thank you, to worship you, to adore you, to bow at your feet and magnify you all the day long. When the sun is shining on us, when the rain is falling on us, when trouble is knocking at our door, when sorrows like sea billows roll, our song all the day long is still to praise you, to say yes to your will, yes to your way, to bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name, hallelujah. Oh, we worship you. We glorify you, we exalt you, we honor you, we adore you, we magnify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Our souls say hallelujah. Our souls glorify you today. We bow at your feet this morning and we cry holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. You're a wonder, you're a deliverer, you're a healer, you're a baptizer, you're a blind man healer. We thank you today, we worship you today. Thank you for smiling on us. Thank you God for smiling on us. Thank you for looking favorably upon us. Thank you for opening the windows of heaven on us. Thank you for doing exploit in our lives. Thank you for supplying all of our needs according to your riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you for waking us up this morning. Thank you for starting us on our way. Thank you for our sight. Thank you for food on our tables. Thank you for a shelter. Thank you, God, for health. Thank you for strength. Thank you for bread. Thank you for water. Thank you for money in our pockets. Thank you for joy in our hearts. Thank you for peace in our souls. Thank you, God. Thank you for everything. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for joy unspeakable and full of glory. We worship you. We glorify you. Don't want to ask you for nothing. Just want to say thank you. Don't want to beg you for nothing. Just want to say thank you. Don't want to plead before you. Just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, come on, come on. Don't let nobody beg you. If he's done anything for you, praise him. Oh. Glory, 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 glory. Ah. Oh, that men will praise the Lord. Come on. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. My soul loves only you, Lord. Oh, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. Amen. Oh, Jesus. There's something mighty sweet about serving the Lord something real good can happen to you when you praise the Lord he can work through those who praise him 
When you don't know your way, you can always praise him. We don't know what to say and pray. They say, Lord, you're a good God. Heaven will come down and fill your soul. Say amen. amen. God bless you with our scripture lesson today. Here is Mother Ziola Martin. Thank the Lord, for he is good, and his mercies endureth forever, so we must keep praising him. Our scripture today is John, St. John, the ninth chapter, from 1 to 11, St. John 9, 1 to 11. And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither have this man sinned nor his parents but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had thus spoken, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and he anointed the eyes of the blind man with clay and said unto him, go wash in the pool of Salaam, which is by interpretation sent. He went his way therefore and washed and he came seeing, hallelujah, he came seeing and the neighbors therefore and they which before had seen him that was blind said, is not this he that sat and begged? Some said, this is he. Others said, he is like him. But he said, I am he. Hallelujah. Therefore said they unto him, how were thine eyes opened? And he answered and said, a man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said unto me, go to the pool of Salaam and wash. And I went and washed and received my sight. Thank God for his precious word. Long ago in a land called Bethlehem was born the Lamb who bore my sin and felt my pain to free my soul from sin. He paid the price for that I might live. Suffered loss, hung on the cross to free my soul, to make me whole is worth it to be praised. Long ago. Born the land who 
bore my sin and felt my pain to free my soul from sin. He paid the price so that I might live. He suffered loss, hung on the cross to free my soul. To make me whole is worthy to be praised. That's why I can say,
when there seems to be no hope for me And yes, I'm satisfied With the joy he placed within my soul And how he helped me to bear My heavy load Oh yeah I Oh yes I am
more music from the Youth and Young Adult Mass Choir and Deliverance Male Chorus will minister in song later on in our program. Now it's time to hear from our senior pastor, the Reverend Benjamin Smith. And in a few seconds, we are going to share with you out of God's word as it relates to God's great men. Last Sunday, the message was especially designed to encourage the women. Today, we want to encourage the men and then we're going to get back to the women. You see, we have to alternate because we don't want anybody to say, well, pastor is favoring this group or that group. The Lord is concerned about all of us. Amen? Amen. Amen. So in just a few seconds, we're going to school. So while you are finding our first passage of scripture, Jeremiah chapter five, we want to thank you once again for your support. Don't stop. The support is going on and we need your continued support, your prayers above all, godly living and uh, faithfulness unto the Lord. If we're going to reach the goals that the Lord has allowed us to set, we need to work together with our eyes set on the goals and our minds stayed on Jesus. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 5, beginning at verse 5, and it reads as followers. I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them, for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God. But these have altogether broken the yoke and burst the bands. You're with me. Don't be ashamed to speak up. Burst the bonds. Amen? God does consider men in various categories. We must recognize the difference between God's idea of greatness and man's idea of greatness. Men try to accomplish great feats in many instances egotistically to be recognized as a great men or they want to be considered great because of their accomplishments. That's not God's idea of greatness. If we accomplish anything meaningful and realistically in this life, it's going to have to be because God is in control of our lives. If God is the one that's making it happen, then in reality, that is true greatness. Not because of the individual, or not because of the personality, or not because of the accomplishments, not because of his achievements, but because God does great things through men. And as you've often heard me say, I don't believe in great men. I believe men find their place in a great God and he does great things through them. But God recognizes that and says here, I will get me unto the great men and will speak unto them for they have known the way of the Lord and the judgment of their God, but these have altogether burst the barns. What is the Lord focusing on here? The fact that men has taken the message of God to heart. They have searched the scriptures and they are walking accordingly. And that's what the psalmist tell us in first Psalms. Blessed is the man who walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. In other words, embrace the lifestyle of the worldly, the carnal, the materialistic, but embraces the lifestyle that God has laid out before him. Learning God's way of life. 
learning to apply God's principles to his life on a daily basis. And the wisest man that ever lived, Solomon said, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So he is the one that, that accomplishes the great feats. And if he says a man is great, fine. We can't argue with that because he is all wisdom. He is all knowing. But he focuses on the greatness of man as it result to man's yieldingness to him, man's obedience to him, man's faithfulness to him, man's commitment to him, man's dedication to him. He is the one that makes it happen in man's life. Now man becomes the channel through which the Holy Spirit flow to do great things or accomplish great things for God. And in that sense, God says, that's a great man. He's not great because of his abilities. He's not great because of his skills. He's not great because he's a scientist. He's not great because he has accomplished great things in this life. But he's great because a great God is making things happen through him. God acknowledges that and recognizes that. And here he points to the fact that here's a man that, that studies the law. He studies my ways. He studies my instruction. And he is able to apply them to his life. Not only that, but he provides leadership for people. There is a void in the world today, and as a result, there's a, a void in the hearts of men. There is a, a state of mind. People are, are in a state of inadequacy. That serves its purpose to some degree in some instances. But when people feel so inadequate that they have to use substance to feel good about themselves, drug addiction becomes a, an acute, continued problem in the human family. People feel good about themselves because drugs stimulate them and make them feel different. Well, as far as God is concerned, he has a plan for man. He created man and he has a plan for him. And if man will follow his instructions and obey his, his teachings, then he will feel good about himself because of to whom he belongs. You see, when, when you see me doing something, uh, I'm, I'm like the songwriter says, when you see me walking right, the Lord is using me. I believe we ought to do all that we do to the glory of God, but we ought to do it with all of our hearts, with all of our mind, with all of our strength, with all of our energies, not egotistically not to gain recognition. I, I don't care if you never say amen. It doesn't make, make men this. I'm not preaching for your amen. I'm not preaching so you can think I'm a great preacher. I have no desire to be a great preacher. I represent a great God. And if anything comes out of what I'm saying, it's because I have studied God's word and I'm giving you God's message. I like to think of myself as a messenger of God, not just in the pulpit, but in the home in the street, wherever I am, in another city, and I am no holier than you are, it's the God in me that makes the difference. But if I can't follow God, then I can't lead you. And if you're following somebody that's not following God, neighbor, you better forget it because you ain't going nowhere. Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. We're talking about true greatness, true greatness, God's great men, and of course, women also. Whosoever therefore shall break one of, the le of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them. The same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So you see, God's idea of greatness 
has nothing to do with your abilities, your skill, your talent, your looks. It has to do with your obedience to him, your yieldedness to him, your commitment to him, your allowing him to control your life. That's what the Lordship of Jesus Christ is all about. When Jesus Christ is Lord of your life, he calls the shots. And neighbor, what a blessing to have somebody who knows all to give all for you. And that's what God did. He gave his only begotten son and the son gave his life and the Holy Ghost gave himself to indwell us, to make us what God chose us to be. God did not create man to be the footstool of Satan. He is the footstool of Satan when he's involving himself in drugs and alcohol, illicit sex, violence, wickedness, and crime. The devil is using him. If you don't believe it, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2. That's not God's plan for man. And as long as man rejects God's plan, he's going to have problems. There's just no way in God's green earth that man can succeed in living a fulfilling, meaningful life without God. God is the one that provides life and sustains life. Ephesians chapter 2, beginning at the first verse, and you have he quickened or made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. Your lifestyle was shapen by the world. You did the things that the world provided for you. And some of you are still doing that. Some of you are still embracing worldly, materialistic patterns of life. God is concerned about that. God wants you to dare to be different. He says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. But you see, people are not opening their minds to God. They're not exercising their minds in God's word. In the first passage of scripture we read, we saw that that was the difference. That made the difference in great men and just ordinary men. Men who exercise their minds in the thought realm of God. What are you doing when you are meditating in God's word? You are making your mind a channel for God's thoughts. And neighbor, there's just no way you can think God's thoughts and live like the devil. And here we find that that's what occurs apart from God. Satan has control of, and he is the one that calls the shots as far as men are concerned apart from God. Where in times past, ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That same spirit has control of the drug addicts, the pornographers, the carnal, the materialistic, the godless people that we have to come in contact with on a daily basis. But as children of God, we must realize not only are we to delight in and rejoice in the salvation of the, the, the God of our salvation, but we must so demonstrate his lifestyle. How does God live? How would God have us live? He tells us in the word. How would God have us behave as God's children? Do we represent God or do we represent Madison Avenue or Paris, France? Or do we represent Beijing, China? Beijing, China? Or do we represent Russia? Who do we, we represent as children of God? God said, you're the lights of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You're not to be like the world, but you are to shine that the world might see me through you. That is the difference. Turn with us. What make men great men when men are, are, are willing to allow their minds to be renewed? A new lifestyle must be followed with a new trend of thoughts. So we don't become great because 
we become great scholars. God is not talking about scholarly greatness. He's not talking about greatness as the world desire or the world identify greatness. The greatness that God is talking about is unsurpassed. It is superior. It is true greatness. And how do we enter into that greatness in God? First of all, Second Timothy, or Second, I'm sorry, Second Corinthians chapter 5, 17 says, if any man be in Christ Jesus, if any man be in Christ Jesus, he is not going to be, not was, but he is a new creation. So we move from the domination of Satan of this world, in this world says the apostle John, lie in the lap of Satan, or this world lie in the embrace of Satan. Jesus said, I am come and the prince of this world hath nothing in me. We are not to allow Satan to have anything in us. We're not where we are going to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. And we need to focus on where we are going. Paul says, forgetting those things that are behind and press toward the mark. Listen, neighbor, you're not going to just go in by flowery beds of ease. You're going to have to press your way. You're going to have to take the kingdom by violence. You can't just sit on a stool of do nothing and expect and sing a tune of do less and expect to have victory in your life. Men may think that you are some great individual as they look at you, as they listen to you, as they observe you. But God is saying, it's all for filthy, it's all filthy rides in my sight. It's only as we press our way and take authority over the devil. Get him out of your life, get him out of your business, and get off that lukewarm position that you're in. I would that you were hot or cold, but because you're neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I'm saying to the men here, forget about the, 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 the social gathering. You want, to, you want to be men indeed, men in your home, men on the job. You want to be real fathers to your children and real husbands to your wife. Man, forget about the, the social gathering that you are involving yourself in. Forget about the specialists that, that you're exposing yourself to who are going to teach you how to be good men, how to be real men. Get in the Word of God and God will show you how to be a man. Focus on Jesus because he was a man's man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ephesians 4 beginning at verse 20. And while you're turning to verse 20, let me remind you, beloved, that God is not talking about men who went to Harvard, men who went to Oxford, men who went to Cambridge, men who went to Princeton. He's not talking about men who have great intellectual skills. As important as that is, Go wherever you can go and get all you can get, but turn your life over to Jesus Christ. He will use what you have if you give it to him. He's the one that makes it happen. So he's not talking about people who are great scholars, but he is talking about people who are great learners. Oh, you didn't hear me. People who are great learners. That's what we saw in our first passage in Jeremiah 5, 5, where the people meditated in the Word. That was the, that was the, the essence of the message there. People who knew God's law, who studied God's law, who learned God's ways, and who applied them to their lives. Here, we see the necessity of preparing ourselves not only to become great, but to live great lives in the presence of a great God. Beginning at verse 20, remember what we said from the 12th chapter of Romans, the Lord said, by the renewing of 
your mind. The renewing of your mind. There are people who will never uh, accomplish anything for the Lord. They're too busy focusing on themselves. When they pray, they're praying for themselves. They're praying for their own personal need. They will never accomplish anything in their, in their lives because they are focusing on the things that they desire. We need to focus on the things that God desires. What does God want of us? That's what we need to know. I am the true vine. My father is the husband man. You the branches. You can do nothing except you abide in me. If you abide in me, you bring forth fruit. So we're not talking about great scholars. We're talking about great learners. People who learn God's way. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly at heart and you shall find rest unto your soul. Note from the 20th verse, beginning at verse 20 of Ephesians chapter 4. But ye have not so learned Christ. What have we not learned? Let's back up a little bit. Beginning at the 17th verse. This I say therefore and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, as other non-Jews, non-godly people walk. You see, the Jewish people were God's chosen people to bring truth to the world, to bring true religion to the world, to bring reality to the world, to bring Jesus Christ to the world. And the Gentiles were our caste. They were nobody. They had no God, only the heathen. They had the gods that they made with their hands. But God has changed all of that. And thanks be to God, we all sit together now in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. In the vanity of their minds, having their understandings darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Because of the blindness of their hearts, who being past feeling have given themselves over to, unto lasciviousness or lustfulness, excessiveness, to, war, to work all uncleanness with greediness. Here again, that self, me, and mine. The carnal mind, the natural way of thinking. But the renewed mind must have a renewed vision. It must be brought up. It must be focused on the creator rather than the creation. Thank God for this beautiful earth that's created, but it's nothing compared to what it's going to be. And we're going to dwell on it forever and ever and ever. So look beyond the present state and look to the future. As a matter of fact, Isaiah says it's going to be so great and so marvelous and so wonderful and so stupendous until this present earth will not come into mind. In the millennium, when Jesus come back to restore order and then from then on in, beyond the millennium into all eternal ages to come, this earth is going to be God's headquarters. This earth is going to be perfect because when God is in control and God will be in control and that's where we are now and that's why the apostle said we must take the kingdom by violence and we'll get to that later on. But here we're talking about what we learn, not great students of worldly learning as important as that is. Yes, get that too. Not great scholars from a literary standpoint. Yes, that's important be great scholars, but what we're talking about here is great learners. What have you learned? Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, man. You, you're not going to learn of God having social gatherings and having specialists come in, psychologists and psychiatrists and, and, and scientists and all of these different people. You try to find out what God's will is for your life and throw yourself into it wholeheartedly, unreservedly. 
the walkathon was a great success, but Linda threw herself into that process with all of her energy, all of her heart. She, she every Sunday and all through the week, but Linda was here. She was doing whatever she could. She putting it together and getting people involved. Linda and B worked with and all, others of you, but you need leadership. And if you're going to follow leadership, that leadership must be godly. They must be committed. They must be total. So when we learn of Jesus, not only did he come as God to redeem us, he came as the God-man to show us what man should be like, how man should live, how man should walk. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light and ye shall find rest unto your soul. Verse 20, but ye have not so learned Christ. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. So our focus need to be on Jesus. Some of us are more religious about our church than we are Jesus. We're religious about our preacher. We're religious about our religion. We're religious about our doctrine. We've got it all together. Nobody else have it like we have it. You see, we know all the answers, and we've been there, and it's our, it's our particular faith. It's our particular denomination. It's our particular church organization. No, it's Jesus. Our focus must be on Jesus. And if Jesus isn't being lifted up, if Jesus isn't being sought, if Jesus isn't being glorified in your life, neighbor, you have missed the whole purpose for coming in to God's life, into God's kingdom. You're, or you're on the outside, you're an outsider. And you learn that by walking with Jesus, not just when you come to church. Don't come to church for the preacher to preach you happy. Come to church to learn how to walk with Jesus wholeheartedly the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. Come to be edified, come to be strengthened, come to be built up in Jesus, not in the preacher, not in the organization, not in the denomination, not in the religion, but in Jesus Christ, he is the object of our faith, the object of our worship, the object of our love, the center of our life. If we are anything, it's because of him who indwells us. Greater is he that is in you, said John, than he that is in the world. I can do all things, said the apostle Paul, through Christ which strengtheneth me. Hallelujah. So if you've learned Jesus, it's because you have been listening, you have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. Now you, the Bible tells us to try the spirit. Every spirit that profess Christ is not of Christ. And that's one of, the, one of the telling signs of the soon coming of Jesus Christ. In the last days, he said, they would come and declare themselves to be the anointed one. They would come and say that I am Christ. And we are seeing this happening all the time. And they're focusing on the church. They're slipping into the church and trying to get people out of the church into cults and occults. I told you about the testimony that I heard of the young man who was in a, a, a cult and now has been delivered and he's going around telling his story that Jesus Christ is the only solution to this world's problem. He said they would, these cults would send people into the church and they would get those people who were not praying and fasting and studying the word. They were the most vulnerable. Neighbor, you cannot go from Sunday to Sunday without feeding your soul and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And believe me, that's what the Apostle Paul said. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole arm of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. And after you've done all to stand, it's good to know, neighbor, that you can stand. After the devil has thrown everything at you but the kitchen stove, and you're still standing, and he go back for reinforcement, and when he comes back, the Holy Spirit will raise up a standard against him. You can stand, you hear me? And when you've done all to stand, Sister Sue and Brother Joe, and you can't stand them, stand anyhow, honey. Because if you can't stand people because they disagree with you, because they don't part their hair like you do, or because they don't have as much as you do. Or because they don't wear the kind of wig that you wear. 
because they're not vain enough to put on a toupee like you do. <laughs> the strong must bear the infirmities of the weak. God forbid that we should boast in anything except Jesus Christ, him crucified, risen and ascended. Bless God's great name. Let's go verse 21 again, Ephesians chapter 4. If so be that ye have heard him. Are you hearing Jesus? Or are you just hearing a beautiful sermon? Are you hearing the gospel? The gospel represents Jesus. And have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. What is the old man? Who is the old man? The nature and spirit of Satan. Satan was the controlling factor in our lives before we came to Jesus Christ. And we do not allow him to dictate the quality of life for us anymore. As we saw in Ephesians chapter 2, that it is he that caused the children of disobedience to behave as they do. And we were all victims of his presence and his power in our lives. But now the apostle says, take off the old man. If you've learned Jesus Christ, then honey, you know that he is better than anything that you have ever experienced in your life. If you have really experienced him, it's one thing to know him theoretically. It's something else to know him experimentally. And if you know him experimentally, you're going to have a new mind. The renewing of your mind is essential that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Neighbor, never underestimate the power of the mind. When you hear these people talking about mind power, remember that the mind is a powerful mechanism. It depends upon who is using your mind whether or not you are using it under the governing power of the Holy Spirit, or Satan is using it in a carnal sense because you think that way. What you think is usually what you say. And many of us, as I've said to you on numerous occasions, while we are like computers, we have not had the old software erased. While we've entered into covenant with the Lord, we are still dominated by emotional and physical traits that has developed over the years. The emotional scars is still there. Somebody told you and you have heard over and over again, you'll never be anything. You'll never be any good. You're just like your old daddy. You don't know nothing. Didn't I tell you that C-A-T spell cat? You dummy, you don't know nothing. Well, there, there are young people. There are people who have been brought up under that kind of stress where there was no love in the home and some had no family. And some of you in here was abused by your father, your brother, members of your family, incest. Those things play havoc with your emotion. And because you have not been able to renew your mind and erase those, scar those emotional scars, you find it extremely difficult to make spiritual applications to natural needs. You are thinking in terms of what you feel. Well, the just shall live by faith, not by feeling. The just shall live by faith, not by sight. So what we need to do to renew our minds is meditate in God's Word. If we meditate in God's Word, remember that God's Word is living. It is powerful. It is sharper than a two-edged sword. 
it pierces to the divine asunder, dividing asunder of soul and spirit, the joint, the marrow of the bone, a discerner of the intent and the thoughts of the heart. So we need to make sure that we are renewing our mind on a daily basis by going to the Word. You see, what the church has not been teaching us and what we have not been uh, receiving and applying is God's principles that revolutionize our lives and sustain us in a higher dimension. When Satan is taking what God has given and using it out of context, taking it out of context and using it, I understand that many of the athletes have embraced the the, the thought of, of um, meta, cons yeah, help me out. <laughs> Transcendental, that's what I'm trying to think. Transcendental, thank you. Transcendental meditation. It transcends all that you are troubled about and brings you into a place of serenity, I understand. Well, you see, God has given us that principle, but he gives it to us in the context of his total will for our lives. As we meditate in God's word, we make his word a lamp unto our feet. And what's a lamp? Well, a lamp was the light that they used in olden days to make sure that they didn't put their feet down upon a viper or step in a hole or step on a rock. They fastened the little lamps around their feet and that showed them how to walk. The Word provides for us a lifestyle that enables us to walk as God walks, as God wants us to walk. God's Word is a guide to us. And if you are walking in safety, you don't have to be afraid. You don't have to fear anything. If you in safety and, and your heart you have erased the old emotional traits. You have removed the old, the old software. You have renewed your mind. That's where it all operates in the mind. You are now secure because you think you are secure. You are secure and you can say, I can do all things through Christ, but just saying it is not enough. It must be settled in your heart because as a man, thinketh in his heart, so is he. So we must settle it in our heart, and that's why it's necessary to meditate in it. What are you doing when you're meditating? You're thinking deep. When you're thinking deep and meditating, what are you doing? You are erasing the old software that you've been programmed with, and you're moving into a new, higher dimension in Christ Jesus. And if you keep thinking it, what you think is what you're going to say. And eventually, if you keep saying what you're thinking, you're going to keep getting what you're getting. If you think, well, how do you feel today, John? Oh, I feel pretty good under the circumstances. You see, old Arthur's acting up today. Well, as long as you think that, honey, you're going to have that problem. Start thinking what God is saying about you. God said, I am the Lord that healeth thee. If you are going to join the, the modern, the modern psychological, the modern teaching that God doesn't do it anymore today, so I have to suffer the consequences. That's not what God said. God said, I'm the Lord that healeth thee. God said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospereth. Now, would God do more for Gaius than he would for us? Surely not. By his strife, the apostle Peter said, we are healed. That is just one area that we need to focus on to realize that if we start thinking right, start acting right, start living right, start talking right, Bless God, we are going to be right. Know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, what is truth? Truth is reality. You see, 
In reality, we are God's children. In reality, we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. In reality, we have overcome the world and we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In reality, our lives are hid in God with Christ Jesus. So in reality, we are overcomers of the world by faith. Truth is reality. So if we walk in reality, if we think in reality, if we talk reality, then we are going to enjoy reality. I would tell you more. Stand on your feet, but I don't have time. John said, if we walk in the light, what is John saying? If our lifestyle embraces the truth of God and we live by God's truth, walk is a lifestyle. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with who? Huh? One, One with another and who? We have fellowship with God. And you mean to tell me that you're walking with God and you're talking with God and you're saying what God says about you Forget about all of that stuff that happened back there when you was on your way up. Reprogram your computer. Renew your mind. You're not where you're going to be, but bless God, you're not where you used to be. Stop allowing Satan to cause you to live by the old standards. You don't have to be jealous of anybody because you are uniquely a one of a kind in Christ Jesus. There's nobody in the world like you. They don't have your fingerprints. They are not like you. So you don't have to be jealous because they seem to be rising and they seem to be getting recognition. That's all vanity anyhow. You don't want that. You don't want people patting you on the back. You don't want people trying to lift you up. You're already up in Jesus Christ. You are not so insecure that you feel threatened because you are not getting recognition like somebody else. Forget it. You can have mine if you want it. I don't need it. All I need is an opportunity to demonstrate the love of God, the faith of God, the power of God, the goodness of God, the presence of God, the loyalty of God, the reality of God in my life. to rise above the little petty jealousies and envies and bitterness and selfishness and pride and vanity. We don't have anybody around here, do we? Don't answer that. <laughs> Those people out there who sell drugs, they're the only one that's full of vain, full of vanity all of their gold chains around their necks. Honey, you don't need that. Then those, those weak-minded believers who have to have a cross around their neck. Jesus is not on the cross, so why would I want to wear it? That's the next phase of the message when we come back. The carnal mind. 
the carnal mind. Renew your mind. Be yourself in Christ Jesus. God came to redeem you in the person of Jesus Christ. He died to redeem you, rose to justify you, ascended to intercede for you, and man, if you are God's man, you are a great man. Amen. In God's sight. Amen. I'm talking about true greatness. Amen. I'm not talking about all of that stuff that men talk about. Oh, passive me, that great man of God. Forget it, neighbor. That's not what any man of God is about. We want to hear the Lord say it. Amen. Amen. We want to hear it from Jesus. People think men are great because they make great discoveries. They discovered that they could go to the moon and they landed on the moon. They are trying to discover what's on Mars. But you see, the great one to whom we belong put it all together. He knows what is there. And he isn't concerned about our striving to go to Mars, go to the moon. He's concerned about our striving to enter in at the beautiful gate. Hallelujah. You see, where we're going, we're going to pass Mars and the moon and all the other places so fast. Lord, have mercy. Think about who you are in Christ. Don't worry about who somebody else is, what somebody else knows. What Today's message was ministered in the auditorium of the Deliverance Evangelistic Church with our senior pastor, the Reverend Benjamin Smith, God's great man. Now, as promised, we'd like to feature the music ministry of the male chorus. The apple of his eye. Hallelujah. So good. And he's so good. God is so good. Uh, he's so good. Don't you know that he woke me up this morning? And you know he started. I said the Lord is good to me. He's so good to me. God is so good. Uh, he's so good. And say that he started on my way. I know the Lord is good. God is so good. He's so good to me. And God answers prayer. He answers my prayer. God answers prayer.
If you would like to have a cassette copy of today's program on audio cassette tape and share this message with a special friend, please write today and ask for audio cassette number C1689 and address all correspondence to The Time of Deliverance, P.O. Box 4409 in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19140. Please enclose a donation of $5 for each cassette ordered. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah. He's a good God. He's a good God. I would just sit there a while ago thinking about my life. I was supposed to have been dead 55 years ago. According to the doctor, I was supposed to have been dead 55 years ago. Now I'm over 72. I've made a few more years. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Nobody but Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I've been gone, gone, gone. But Lord, have mercy. The Lord, have mercy on me. Look down and solve your sinner. Save me. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. God is so good. He's so good to me. I'm so glad I know the troubles don't last always you know that I'm so glad I know the troubles don't last always I'm so glad I know the troubles don't last always oh my Lord oh my Lord what shall I do what shall I do? You better run, sinner, run. Run on, sinner. Run, sinner, run. You better find you a hiding place. Hiding place. You better run, run, sinner, run. run on, run, sinner. sinner run. You better find, find you a hiding place. Run, run, sinner, run. run on, sinner. You better find you a hiding place. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. What shall I do? What shall I do? You know that I'm I'm so glad. I know the troubles don't last always. You know that I'm I'm so glad. I know the troubles don't last always. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I know the troubles don't last always. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do, Lord? When I'm in trouble, what shall I do, Lord? When I have nowhere to go, what shall I do, Lord? When you not beside me, what shall I do, Lord? What shall I do, Lord? Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad I found salvation in time. You know that I'm so glad. I'm so glad I found salvation in time. I'm so glad I found salvation in time. Oh my Lord, oh my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? You know, soon, one soon one morning, soon one morning, you know, when death comes creeping in my room. You know, soon, soon one morning, you know, when death comes creeping in my room, my room. Soon, soon one morning, you know, when death comes creeping in my room. Oh, my Lord. Oh my Lord, what shall I do? What shall I do? You better run, run on sinner. You better find you a hiding place. 
You better run, run on, sinner. You better find you a hiding place. Run, run on, sinner. You better find you a 